Pilgrim Street development, Newcastle upon Tyne. Reconstruction of the Royal Arcade. Notes on the condition and reuse of the existing masonry to the west facade of the fore building. Based on detailed inspection of the stonework stored on the Shieldfield site and carried out on the 7th, 13th, 14th and 23rd of September 1967. The notes to be read in conjunction with drawings numbers 76 to 13A and 76 to 14A, showing damage to the existing elevations, October 1967. Section 1. Doric entablature to ground floor stage. 1. Main Doric architrave. Horse MM with reguli and guttae. West face. Stone 1. Fair condition. Slight spalls in two corners. Also plug holes in face for former sign. MM2. Not visible on important face. Appears to be in fair condition. MM3. Appears to be satisfactory. MM4. Plug holes on face. Very slight damage on top of arras of tenure. MM5. Appears to be sound on the face, but shows a crack or possibly saw mark on one of the side returns. Plug holes on the face. MM6. Stone splitting on tenure at top corner and will require patching or piecing in. Arras edges bad also. MM7. Large lintel stone to arras on front damaged at both ends and will need piecing in, though the lintel stone itself might be reused. The inner face seems to be satisfactory. MM8. Large centre lintel stone. Top bed shaling at centre and may require cutting out and a new piece piecing in. At the southern end a number of cracks showing in the front face and a large section missing at the back. Probable complete renewal of this stone required. MM9. 
Third large lintel stone. Top corner damaged at south end. Top arras tenure broken and spalled in centre, and piecing in required. Remainder probably sound. MM10. Spalled on top edge at south end. Piecing in required to reguli and guttai. MM11. Stone split through in the centre. Possibly reusable, but may have to be renewed. Has been split by the fire at the back, probably. MM12. Damage to top arras and corners. MM13. Apparently fair. MM14. Fair. 2. Course LL. Triglyphs and metopes. West front. LL1. Cornerstone. Triglyph sound on north face. Top mould spalled on southwest corner and needs patching. Piecing in. LL2. Metop face not visible on ground. LL3. Triglyph. Signs of groove or split appearing in front face. Probably old fault in stone. Probably reusable in present form. LL4. Metop surface shaling very slightly, but may be reusable. Top arras rather worn. LL5. Triglyph. Top arras weathered and slight chips in one or two places. LL6. Meto lying on face. Top arras broken and band spalled off at the end. LL7. Triglyph. Fair. Top slightly weathered. LL8. Meto. Top arras chipped but otherwise fair. LL9. Triglyph. Badly broken. Probably requires renewal. LL10. Meto. Chipped on vertical arises. Otherwise fair. LL11. Triglyph. Top corner split off. Will require new piece piecing in. LL12. Metope. Bottom arras of stone spalled. Top band chipped at end and top arras weathered. LL13. Triglyph. Top arras is damaged. Slight piecing up or possibly plastic repair. LL14. Metope. Weathered on top edge. Bottom corner broken or split off. Piecing or renewal required. LL15. Triglyph and metope combined. Condition uncertain. Lying on face. LL16. Triglyph and metope combined. A horizontal split showing at one end of the stone. Condition of remainder uncertain. LL17. Metope. Weathered on top edges. Otherwise fair. LL18. Triglyph and metope combined. Weathered and probably reusable. LL19. Triglyph and metope combined. Spalled on top arras at both ends. Spalled on bottom arras at south end. Slight shaling on the face of the triglyph. LL20. Metope and triglyph combined. Triglyph spalled or broken on top corner. Piecing in required. Section 2. Masonry to ground floor stage, including Praneus. 5. Courses OO to TT of ground floor Doric stage. Stonework packed close together, preventing any adequate inspection of the masonry stone by stone. Generally, the stones are in fair condition and mostly quite deep front to back on bed, being 1 foot 6 inches to 2 foot on bed. Some of the stones are damaged slightly and some of them shaling on the face being face bedded. For instance, TT50, which is a cornerstone. Most of the piers between the windows in the Praneas ought to be reusable. On the south side, where the curvature has been changed, the stonework for the piers can probably be redressed at a slightly tighter curve. New head and sill stones will be needed in the Praneas and the inner piers to the arcade interior will have to be renewed complete none of the stonework having been saved at the second stage of the demolition. For Doric columns, see section 4, 16. Section 3, Corinthian entablature. 11. Course H. 
main upper cornice with lion heads to the sema and coffering to the underside of the corona. H5, corner stone, may rest on the north face, slight shaling, lion's head on north face and on corner satisfactory, bottom arras on north face chipped, also top arras. On the west face, lion's head satisfactory. A certain amount of shaling on the front sema and corona and bottom arras chipped and uneven, though dressing off may be sufficient. Coffering underneath inaccessible. West front, H6. Top arras and fillet chipped at one end. Vertical joint very slightly chipped at the same end. Bottom arras uneven. Lion's head slightly damaged on nose and mouth, but might be repaired. H7. Lion's head satisfactory. Slight shaling on front faces. Bottom edge slightly damaged below the head. H8. Both lion's heads damaged to some extent and repair or renewal or redressing will be needed. Bottom edge chipped and uneven in places. Front face shaled though rubbing back may be sufficient. H9. Gain front faces shaled. Bottom edge chipped, stone weathered, at south end and bottom corner and lion's head badly defaced and renewal would be needed. Complete renewal of this stone may be considered necessary. H10. Lion's head satisfactory. Front lower face shaled and bottom edge uneven. Also top edge chipped in places. H11. Top arras of fillet and face seam are damaged all along top edge and at one end. Lion's head badly defaced and nose completely missing. Lower corona chipped on underside at one end and spalled at the other end. Extensive repiecing in or possible renewal of this stone would be needed. In all these stones, the former raised joints along the top surfaces are badly defaced or spalled off, and dressing off prior to layering the cornice covering would be needed. 12. Coarse eye, console coarse and bed mould. I10. Northwest corner. Stone much weathered and requires renewal. Consoles in two directions. I11. Unusable. I12. Weathered but possibly reusable. I13. Console. Chipped on top surface, badly weathered on undersurface, renewal desirable. I16. Console. Back of stone sound. Console part weathered on underside may be acceptable depending upon standard of finish required. I-18, console. Again, much weathered, bed moulds badly worn, renewal possibly needed, certainly of bed moulds. I-20, weathered again, bed moulds satisfactory. I-22, seems to be satisfactory. All of these stones are very badly chipped on their top edge mould. I-21, probably fair. I-19, bed mould, mainly fair apart from top edge mould. I-24, console, shaling on side, undersurface is fair, bed mould poor. I-23, front face not visible. I-26, console, possibly reusable. Two more consoles, possibly reusable, but numbers invisible. I-33 and 35, bed moulds, weathered on face. I-36, badly damaged on top edges and probably unacceptable. I-38, possibly usable. I-39, bed mould, weathered, possibly usable. I-40, damaged on front, possible usable. I-41, bed mould, weathered, possibly usable. I-42 console, chipped on front edges. I-44, chipped on front edges, undersides not visible. I-45, bed mould, very narrow on back face. Front seems comparatively fair. I-46, possibly reusable. I-48, shaling on side, doubtful. I-50, possibly reusable. I-52, damaged by fire at back. I-54, front ends all chipped and damaged and rather doubtful. I-56, ditto. I-58, possible. 
I-60, broken and unusable. I-57 and 59, bed molds, reusable. I-62, console, chipped on top edges, otherwise possibly reusable. I-61, possibly reusable. I-64, cornerstone, damaged on top molded edges, but remainder possibly reusable. Note, whole of course I is very uncertain in its condition. Quite a lot of the plain bed moulds can be reused, particularly on the south side. On the west side they can probably be reused, but may need dressing back to a new face. The console brackets can probably be reused to some extent if an element of weathering and lack of definition is acceptable, and if a fair amount of renewal and piecing in of the top edges is carried out. Probably for estimating purposes, complete renewal of this course ought to be allowed. 13. Course J. Acanthus Freeze. North Return. J1. Ten and a half inches on bed. Fair condition. Triangular blank piece on face as if to conform to roof slope adjoining. J2. One foot four inches on bed. Fair. J3. Eleven inches on bed. Carving fair. J4. Cornerstone. Satisfactory condition on north face, fair on west face. J5. This is the west face, nine to six inches on bed, condition fair. J6. Again fair. J7. Satisfactory. J8. No comment. J9. Twelve inches on bed. J10. End slightly damaged, some repair required. J11. One foot three inches on bed, fair condition. J12, eight inches on bed, satisfactory. J13, long center stone has been left exposed and with carving uppermost and has been much damaged. Extensive piecing in would be needed, but complete renewal of the stone is probably unnecessary. J14, slight damage. J15, satisfactory. J16, satisfactory. J17, slight damage. J18, no comment. J19, weathering on top edge. J20, no comment. J21, no comment. J22, cornerstone, satisfactory. Section 4, Columns and Capitals. 15. Corinthian Capitals and Columns to West Facade. Column 1. Abacus 1. Bracketed 1. Missing or broken. Capital 1. Bracketed 2. One corner, volute, missing. Piecing in required and recarving. Column 1. Bracketed three, all petals and some arises damaged. Column one, bracketed four, aris damaged at top edge. Column one, bracketed five, aris is damaged at the top edge. Column one, bracketed six, base aris is damaged. Base one, bracketed seven, not visible. Column two, abacus two, bracketed one, better than other abacai, capital two, bracketed two, reasonable condition but one volute missing, piece in and recarve, column two, bracketed three, 
arises and petals damaged. Column two bracketed four, faults in stone. Column two bracketed five, arises damaged. Column two bracketed six, aris damaged. Base two bracketed seven, slightly shaled. Column three, abacus three bracketed one, poor, bad damage in corner and to anthemium enrichment. Capital three bracketed two, upper volute slight damage, also slight damage on one side, remained a fair, piecing in. Column three bracketed three, slight damage on one or two arises. Column three bracketed four, fair condition. Column three bracketed five, arises loose and chipped area below same. Column three bracketed six, fair, damage to aris and damage to base. Base three bracketed seven, shaled all round. Column four, abacus four bracketed one, condition hopeless, renew. Capital four bracketed two, two volutes missing, but sides fair, piece in and recarve, front acanthus broken. Column four bracketed three, several arises damaged, petal mouldings round the top neck broken off on one side. Column four bracketed four, arises to fillets damaged in numerous places. Column four bracketed five, split occurs in mouldings due to fault in original stone. Column four bracketed six, split at various points and base broken in one or two places. Base four bracketed seven, top badly split portions missing and partially shaled, piecing in or renewal. Column five, abacus five bracketed one, broken, renew complete. Capital five bracketed two, one volute satisfactory, but one broken and missing. Sculpture generally fair on two faces, but poor on third, largely reusable, piece in and recarve, acanthus leaf broken. Column five bracketed three, top petals damaged, some arises damage. Column five bracketed four, arises damaged. Column five bracketed five, some damage to arises. Column five bracketed six, a lot of fillets defluting damaged in several places, base damaged and broken at one point. There is a basic crack up the full height of one flute. Base five bracketed seven, exact base unknown, but unidentified base may be number five bracketed seven. Old crack to full height of base through torus and scotia and lower torus mould. Column six, abacus six bracketed one, hopeless, complete renewal necessary. Capital six bracketed two, corner of volute missing at one side, complete volute missing at other, remained a fair and probably can be patched by piecing in. Column six bracketed three, some petals missing and two arises hacked away. Column six bracketed four, arises damaged. Column six bracketed five, damaged to tops of fillets all round. Column six bracketed six, condition not known. Column six bracketed seven, eroded. Note on Corinthian columns. Detailed site dimensions of the heights of the individual drums to the columns have produced columns of apparently differing heights, but the evidence now available does not show how these came about or were regulated in the building prior to demolition. It may be necessary to introduce plates or makeup pieces in stone in order to regulate the columns to the required height and these makeup pieces may be incorporated into the extensive scheme of repairs which the column drums will need. In repairing and re-erecting the columns, it is essential that the true alignment and antasis curve of the fillets between the flutes be preserved up the whole height of the column. Also, in cleaning and redressing the columns, it is essential that no more than a quarter of an inch should be lost from the overall diameter of the columns. Otherwise, their diameter to height ratio will be ruined.